this is a cup of sunrise and we have got an amazing guest okay so it, i gotta tell you a little bit about this guest autumn okay um when we had the christian radio station he sent oh, one of the songs that they did that's how i heard heard about them first so, uh sweet crystal is the name of the band that we're gonna be talking about today and then jody about two weeks later sends me a message hey do you want sweet crystal on the program i said uh yeah absolutely okay. so we have as our very special guest and i am not talking short bus special i mean i'm talking an awesome guy andrew uh that's a that's the middle name mark andrew speck i got everything right i think the second time andrew how are we doing buddy yeah call me q everybody calls me q because of q. how my first name is spelled so call me q i'm doing q, great. I like no that. complaints no. Good. Q, I can remember too, by the way. So I'm digging that. <laughs> All right. So now, now, Mark, guys, we're going to be talking a, a little bit about Mark's experience. And he's been in the music industry for a lot of years, a lot of different ends of the spectrum, which I, I love. Uh, now, you're, you're tagged as a Christian rock band. Is, is that right? Or do you guys have another name for it? You know what? That's as good a label as anything. We don't always go out and push ourselves as a Christian rock band because we play a lot of venues that are not Christian per se. So if we just right. come out as a rock band and then we let the word of God hopefully speak through our music to the people that are listening, sometimes it's a surprise to them, but we've been doing this long enough now when people come out to see us, I think they know the message they're gonna get. The, how we deliver it though is pretty unique to the band and God has kept us going for a lot of decades with no, no plans to stop anytime soon. Okay, let, let, talking about a lot of decades, you guys got together back, when did you guys come together? Because this is really cool. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking uh, KISS genre, we're talking uh, some of uh, the, the classic rockers of genre and still together. And you guys follow right up in there, but on a different field, which is really cool. I mean, even Petra uh, had a split there for a while. Now you guys have been around since, when did you guys first come out together? Well, we really came out as Sweet Crystal in 1974, and don't don't do the math. Uh, in 1974, we weren't a we weren't a Christian band back then. Basically, we were young kids with stars in our eyes and spandex on our legs. And yes, we <laughs> I love it. Absolutely. Do you still wear the spandex, Mark? No, none of us can fit in that anymore. Thank you. Um, but if you go so, to like our YouTube site, if you go to the Sweet Crystal page on YouTube, you can see some classic videos back there from the live show and see just who we were and just how long our hair was. Oh, I'm gonna have to go check that out. Absolutely. Okay, so now you, you started out as a, a secular band then, um, yes. and then moving to a, a Christian band. So how long were you playing with uh, in the secular music? Um, and what was that? What's the story behind the change? Well, we we played for probably five <laughs> to six years straight through as uh, a secular band, and it wasn't until about 1978, 79, when I met the the woman who was going to become my wife, Jan, that I actually became born again, and that was a, a that was a trip in itself. She she knew right from the start that I was meant for a higher purpose than what we did but it took a, a yes. took a little while for me to, to turn my life around and and turn my life over to christ and some of the the guys in the band at the time it was a five piece decided they didn't like that direction but uh, you know to their credit my uh, drummer steve weezer and my guitar player bill bladder were perfectly happy with going in the new direction what happened is it turned out that i had a hole in one of my vocal cords. It was there from birth. I didn't know about it, but I would occasionally have problems singing live doing the five, six nights a week, five, six sets a night. And it turned out I had a hole, a congenital cyst in one of my vocal cords. I uh, went to a doctor when I was losing my voice quite a bit and they, he went in and said, well, we can go in uh, with some new treatment, a laser and, and create a new edge for your vocal cord and you know, get rid of it. And I said, okay, let's do that. So I went in, had that done six weeks after the surgery, I still couldn't talk. Uh, we had to hire like a lead singer just to do our things. And as it turned out, I went back in and said, well, how long before I can sing again? And the doctor, bless him, said, what do you mean sing? I go, well, I said I was the lead singer of a band. He goes, I thought you were the leader of a band, like a band leader. 
because he was an old oh. gentleman. He goes, I never would have done that surgery if I knew you needed your vocal cords for that. Oh. So that that brought myself and my wife to my knees because I just said, Lord, what just happened here? I've, I'm turning my life around and all of a sudden I'm not singing. I'm not able to sing. Well, long story short, it took six months, seven months of rehab to get it back in. And I won an award for singing with a contest out of Nashville the following year. And I've been doing it ever since. The main thing is I quit singing the ACDC and the Queen and all the things that was, you know, taking a toll on my life as well Those as Those high voice. notes. And, yeah. And so here I am, you know, 40, 50 years later, still able to do what I'm doing because I'm, I believe it's because I'm doing it for God. Yeah, you know, here's what's so what amazing what the Lord laid on my heart when you were talking about that. What the devil? Well, here it is. You're in the process of turning your life around, and, and 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 pulling in that relationship with Christ. And what Satan has meant to do to destroy, God brings it out in a victory. And 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 through that, you're now and you've been still doing this do the gospel longer than you've been doing secular music. That's a good, you know what, that's a very good observation. I hadn't thought of it in that way. You're right, because we became a Christian band then during the 80s. And even though the live music scene changed here in Detroit, I don't know about where you're at, but it, it definitely changed and went from live music to can disco and that kind of that kind of music. But my guys stayed together. We, we built the studio. We started doing soundtracks and commercial things. And it wasn't until the 90s that we decided to come back out as a three piece the three of us and there are videos on that on the youtube channel as well and we we took a stance and we've been doing it ever since we've we haven't stopped and god has been very good to us we've gone through 13 bass players uh so that's always been a revolving door around here but uh our our recent that's bass player, i'm marty, sure that's a joke yeah, marty you, Kukar, you know what it's a spinal tap kind of thing you know yeah so yeah yeah kind of watching <laughs> <a bit. laughs> but uh marty's been with us now for almost four years i believe so i think we passed his audition so i think we're we're pretty solid now as a as a four piece when well, now you we were talking earlier before this come in that uh, you're at uh you're needing a new shelf uh, or a new house to put the <laughs> awards and accomplishments uh 24 plus your upper awards and now you you've uh, overcome a lot of different things, the vocals, uh, the, the mm. different artists that comes through, which is a, a lot of the things that a lot of bands deal with coming through. But being a, a uh, bringing a Christian message, um, when somebody comes into your show, into a program you're doing, uh, something we had talked about earlier is you will, in, in a secular venue, you even throw in a little bit of music to get their attention so you can bring that gospel message. Uh, give, give us a little bit more information on that because I really think uh, that's a great idea personally um, mm -hmm. because uh, it, it's almost a, a guerrilla warfare tactic, which I like. You know, because it's a little tricky, yeah, a little well, tricky, well, little tricky yeah, thing. Well, you know, there, there's sometimes, I mean, it's just like when we were going down the road and I heard the one song, being a big Motley Crue fan back in the day, man, my ears perked up because I'm like, oh, dude, home sweet home. I my, uh, yeah, uh, he Six. said, he said, is that Sweet Crystal doing Home Sweet Home? I said, it absolutely is. Let's play that one. Uh, so, so tell us about how that, how, sure. how did you, how long did it take to get that thought process in to say, hey, you know what, let's, let's get that jerker in there to, to get their attention. Uh, and it's interesting that you, you bring that up because we still, we usually play Home Sweet Home during most of our shows because it is a common denominator for a lot of the the places that we play and for the crowds that come in what we've discovered over the years is that we can take a relatively known song from a different genre and we crystallize it we turn it into something that's unique to our performance and playing style home sweet home is a perfect example of that if you listen to the beginning it's actually a, a little snippet from the wizard of oz put in there yes. just to, to get your attention and and we like playing the song because for us the lyrics if you listen to them i know they wrote it about being on the road and getting back to their home right. here we look at it as living in this world and getting back to heaven which is our eternal home so that's yes. how we feel yes. about it and by presenting it in a very powerful way somebody that, that might not be open to a christian message in live music might hear this song and go, wow, these guys are pretty good. I like what they're doing. Then the next song that comes up is going to be one of ours that we hope the Holy Spirit will use to get into their lives. The one thing yes. we try to do with Sweet Crystal is make sure that 
as you leave one of our performances or even just listen to one of our songs, you come away feeling better about yourself because everybody's going through something these days, everybody. And chances are somebody in my band has gone through that exact same situation you might be in. And so we offer songs of hope and light and inspiration that even though it might be a tough time, there is always an answer. And it's not, it's not our job to convict people. It's just our job to try to get them to open the door and then the Holy Spirit does his thing so that's that's kind of the the mindset behind it we try to include a cover song in every one of our releases we've got a bob dylan tune in there the call tune on the seventh heaven release yep. and we'll be working on uh, number eight coming up so we'll see what comes out of that one i really love that message i want to commend you for your comeback on the with the vocal cord issue i mean being a singer myself i remember many 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 years ago when the tongue piercing came out uh you know phenomena came out i went to the studio to get to get mine done of course and oh, uh sounded good well no <laughs> i never i never got it done the yeah. guy because i have a really short tongue and the guy said well we're gonna have to pierce it really far on the back and it's gonna have to be sideways Ow. and you're gonna talk with a lisp i said no i'm a singer i can't i can't do that so that i, I even not having it done just the idea of not being able to sing anymore for me was devastating in the idea itself yeah. So I could only imagine how you felt, but uh, hey, you're sounding yeah, great now. Yeah, it was now. tough. Uh, aren't you sweet? Thank you for saying something as nice as that. Yeah, I appreciate that. My voice has changed. I've got uh, recordings of us from those days, and it was it was quite a few notes higher back then. So, but you know, this is how I am, it. and so you just you just take what God gives you and use it to the best that you can. Yes, well, Amen. Now, with you coming in from the 1970s, coming in all these different uh, decades in the music, being long lasting. Uh, uh, you know, standing the test of time. When you go into a place to sing, do you find a lot of your audience around um, our age, or are you finding that you're starting to uh, get some new younger blood in there, if you will, as, as an audience base? You know, what's interesting, Joe, is that we play with a lot of different bands uh, here in here in Detroit. Most of the events are usually four or five or six bands per night. You get 30 awesome. minutes wow. on stage. It's tough. Uh, we've gotten very good at this, but we always like to open the show because my keyboard rig sometimes can take a bit of time to set up. So I don't mind being first because then I can get it out of the way. It's harder when we're in the middle of a night. But that being said, a lot of the bands are much younger than us. And we find that they draw crowds that are younger than us. And we go over just as well with that age group. And I think it's because of the dynamic performance that we put on, because we, we still love playing, even though, you know, we're, we may be a bit older than a lot of the folks that are on the stage after us. We still love playing and it comes through in a live performance. So I don't think that's I think that draws people in. And all of a sudden we're finding commonality with these younger bands and their crowds. If it's just a sweet crystal show, I would say it's, you know, 40s, 50s and 60s that come out to see us because they know us. As a matter of fact, right. the reason we came back out uh, maybe 12 years ago now back into the live circuit was because of a group here that did a veterans benefit. And we hadn't been out in live for about a decade. And the, the, the gentleman who put it together, a Vietnam veteran, remembered us from the 70s. And people awesome. in his organization wow. wanted to know if we were still around would we come out and do this veterans uh, benefit? And we said, you know what, we will. So we came out and we started doing that. And ever since then, we've been working with Wounded Warrior Project, uh, veterans organizations here in Michigan. And it really has given us a whole new focus on our music. If we can go somewhere and be of benefit to somebody else, that's why we play. That's why we show up. We don't go out to be, hey, it's Sweet Crystal, come out and become a fan. We go out because right. being there will hopefully raise awareness and support for the that organization or that person in need. And that really has kept us humbled, but kept us going. Now, guys, we do have a link. Uh, Joe, the link that we have on here is to uh, their Seventh Heaven album. Is that correct? That's correct. That's the, that's okay. the release that came out last year. Okay, now with this really, because they can go down to this link that we have on there and download that album. Am I correct on that? Yes. Okay. Completely, so yeah, free of charge. 
free of charge that you can download that album. Yep. Is that the link? Yep. Jody's looking at me like deer in a head, headlight look. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, to... I'm trying to open the link that he sent Okay, me we're working on that seven. then. Um, but <laughs> I do have the sweetcrystal.com, www. Okay, this is a, they got their website on there. Yes, underneath his name. So anybody okay. that is viewing this show. They can go to sweetcrystal.com. We're going to be talking about the different ways to get uh, to him because I know I'm, I'm, we're big fans of Spotify, and uh, we've been listening to music going way back uh, that you have on Spotify, <laughs> just kind of jamming out with it for the last couple of days. Um, now I want to, I want to come into sweet crystal. Now the name sweet crystal come in because I'm telling you when I first got, you, you'd sent you or one of the members of the band had sent me, um, an MP3 and, of uh, I believe the song by the call. And, uh, okay. so sweet crystal. That was let the day begin. Yeah. Let the day begin yes. So yes. with the name sweet crystal coming in from the seventies. Okay, I gotta know what was the what was the basis of Sweet Crystal? Yeah, have you always been called Sweet Crystal from the beginning? Yes, yes, we started out uh, just that name, and I used to have a bow constrictor from college named Crystal, and that was oh, the whole wow. reason. We were just look, we were just looking for a name, and we picked that name for no other reason. That being said, once I became born again, and we started doing some research. We discovered passages in the book of Revelation that talks about the sweet waters of life that flow out from yes. underneath the throne of God, clear yes. as crystal. And we just I went, just read that last <laughs> night. That's funny. Uh, we just went. God knew ahead of time. God's God's in Absolutely. heaven talking to Jesus, going, "Watch this. They'll get it." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give them some time. They'll get it. That's awesome. Uh, so, so again, we're going back to what you guys instituted at the beginning. God created for a greater meaning. Yeah, it, and, uh, he and must you know, just get a kick out of it whenever we get it right, you know. Yeah, you, you're uh, not going to tell me God ain't, doesn't have a sense of humor. You're just not going to tell me. No, that. not at all. <laughs> I would never I'll say that. <laughs> so let's come up. Uh, you, you've got seven albums out. Yes. Um, and on this newest album, let's talk about this one. Um, as uh, uh, Jody is looking to get that link in, because guys, I'm going to tell you, it's a great album. If you... Um, now, when I say this, I say this out of total respect, okay, Q? Um, okay. If you like uh, like your music nostalgia, if you're in our age, um, we're in our 50s, and uh, the music to me is very nostalgic. You, I definitely get the a Sticks vibe from you, a lot of uh, uh, synthesizer keyboard, which is fascinating, okay? Um, and with that, I also want to say, because I know with my my kids who are in their 20s now, they still listen to some of the stuff that I listen to. So um, they're back at, back in the day. So they're listening to the same style of music. So this music really doesn't have an age limit on it. Would that be a fair statement for you in the band as as well, Q, that you're reaching all ages because of your style? I think that's a good way to define it. We we consider ourselves arena rock, and we of course came up in an age where there were bands such as, like you said, Sticks and Pink Floyd and Kansas and Journey, and we took the songwriting methodology of those years and apply it to our music. So, I think that's you just named some songs of my like that. Bands. Oh, great! Well, songs like that can hopefully stand the test of time. Like you said, people are still listening to Stairway to Heaven, which is early 70s, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. whereas it's, you're going to be hard pressed to find anyone who can tell me, tell you what the song of the year was two years ago, you know, in popular oh, yeah. music. So it's, we hope that we've taken that sensibility and made it our own. We don't really sound like anybody, but there are definite influences in who we are because of the bands that we grew up listening to. My vocal style, I've had a lot of people tell me they, that I remind them of meatloaf and I don't know if they're being I kind could, or being sarcastic, but I don't mind that at all because he was, yeah, I think, I think he's got, I think, yeah, he oh, sings meatloaf, great. Meatloaf was amazing. I'm telling you. Okay. So, so and I totally, I totally agree. Listening to the music, you do have your own style and you can hear those influences uh, because I know when I was, I was listening to him, I mean, not the song that uh, you did a remake with the call uh, by the call, um, you know, I even had some Neil Diamond 
sound in there because I'm a personal big fan of Neil Diamond. And so when you when you were going through it, I was like, man, I had that Amer- the song Neil Diamond America mm-hmm. uh, going through my head. Um, Good point. And, yeah. All and, right. You know, I'll take it. You're still, there yeah. you go. Absolutely. <laughs> when, when you can be compared to those guys, this is a good deal. And now here's what I do like um, also with yours. You do not sound, and I'm, I'm saying this totally as a compliment because I hate cookie cutter artist. Okay. You're not that guy. Mm-hmm. You're not that band. The music today in Christian, whatever it may be, is a cookie cutting style. You're not there. So guys, if you're looking for a different sound, if you're looking for something that's original, um, the Sweet Crystal is the one you want to look for. Um, the album well, and if, seventh- if that, uh, yeah, if that Seventh Heaven link doesn't happen to show up correctly on your page, just have them reach anybody. You can just reach out to me on Facebook. You know, you can find me, Mark Andrew Speck, or at Sweet Crystal, and just let me know, and we will personally message them back the link. It's a it's a zipped file of all the songs and some information from the Seventh Heaven release which we're more than happy to give out and the reason we're giving it out besides the fact we like to give stuff out is it's up for a a detroit music award this year for outstanding gospel christian recording so the more people that can hear it the more chances are we feel that we might make it to the next level of the competition not that we do this for competition but we just feel that this is one way god gets our name and his message out by these types of things it's it's those accolades that you know when some when somebody's got 24 25 awards you know it, it I, I mean uh, gary s paxton who uh did uh, uh monster mash monster mash okay he had three grammys okay and his and his walls are plastered uh, uh in his house with accolades but you know what he used the grammys for door stops <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So you've got this guy. Uh, he had a movie score, uh, Grammy, and, and, a, and a couple of. They used them for doorstops. The accolades are great. It's just so you can go out and reach more people. Absolutely, that's a perfect way to look at it. You know, I mean, like Gary S. Paxton was a doorstop to him. He made you know millions of dollars in it, but he, he lived a very simple life. So when you guys are coming in. Yes, we've got all these great awards and we talk about these things. Um, I mean, you're going all the way from California to Detroit, which is some great music. The Temptations, uh, Skillet is out of Detroit from 1996. Um, You've got the Supremes. You've got a long list of history music where you're at, which is, I think, absolutely phenomenal. So when you guys do these four or five shows, 30 minutes, I mean, there's got to be so much different types of music that you, you get to see and hear coming out of Detroit. And I think that carries over into your music today. W- would you kind of say that has an effect on your music? I would say yes. Uh, I would say because of the rich history of Detroit music, exactly what you talked about, Motown. And as a matter of fact, on the Seventh Heaven release, if you go to the very end of that release, there's a song in there from 1968 called Checkmate by a band that was out of Detroit back then called the SRC. We were involved with a project uh, by a local uh, producer who wanted to put out an entire CD of songs from 1968 from all the bands, Stooges, MC5, SRC, Bob Seger System with current bands. And that that was the song we got to pick because once again, we have a keyboard player and it was a big keyboard song, but that shows you just the influence that Detroit had back, even back in the day in the 60s. It was a huge music scene. That whole CD never came out, but the uh, pr- producer was nice enough to allow us to include it on the seventh heaven. So if you go and listen to that, it's, it's just a hoot. We love playing that song because that we were all really young kids when that came out. And here we are some 60 years later playing that song. <laughs> <laughs> Look out, watch the years now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. so, nice. So let's talk about the, the, the album that you have now. Uh, seventh Heaven, seventh album. It, it, it's a, okay. So the seventh album, seventh song, seventh heaven. You've got your seven, seven, seven in there. L- l- love that. Okay. So now, what was your pick on on how to get your songs on there? What the certain songs that you have on there from when we start on the other side of Calvary? One of my favorites on that album. Uh, your first, your first two. I fell in love with the album. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. The first two. Are, my, are definitely my my top picks. I like Let the Day one. Begin. That's my favorite. Uh, <laughs> uh, That's sweet. I love that tune. I love oh, that yeah, tune. We used to do, 
we would play a couple songs from the call back in our bar days uh i uh, what is it i still believe um i'll think of what the other call song was that we used to do but i remember them from our bar band days and then when we were working on seventh you know we were talking about what's cover tune to do and i just i just remember that song and i pulled it up to the guys i said this is the song and we listened to it and it had a lot of slag guitar in it and i go well but i have a different idea for it and you know god bless the guys in my band they let me take the reins on almost all of our songs i write the majority of them but i write them around billy's guitar playing because i i just he is just one of the more dynamic guitar players i've ever known yeah, he's a so whenever i write a song he is really good so i always write songs with him in mind for all the leads if you listen to a lot of our songs there's not a ton of keyboard leads it's lots of background and and production and sounds and i fill in a lot of gaps but i don't focus on my playing for the focal point of the song it's the, of right. course, the lyrics first but it's always billy's guitar playing that i have shine and uh, across the board i've done that since day one, I still do that, even with the, the new things we're writing for eight, which is coming up. Uh, when will, and just, when will that album be released? Do you know yet? No, we're going to do a couple singles this year. I hope to finish it. It it's, can sometimes be a very slow process, but six and seven came out within two years of each other, which was nice. We've gotten five of the songs ready, but we need eight, of course. I'm, uh, I'm excited to hear that. Yeah, what's fun about this CD, if you think about it, We've got the logo for the front already. If you, if you think of the uh, what a CD cover looks like, think of the name Sweet Crystal going up the side and an infinity, a crystal infinity there. Oh, if yeah. you turn it this way, so the name's on top, it's an eight. So that's oh, that's yeah, the next. That's right. That's the next one. It's going to be Sweet Crystal eight, but it's just kind of the Art graphics. Ideas, will go, I love it. Oh, look at this. So it'll it'll be fun. So we need eight songs. We've got. We've got hours and hours. Wow. We record everything we do over here. We, do, we we have live jam sessions with the band almost every week. I have stacks oh, of CDs that sounds going back amazing. to the 80s. And just to go and try to find cohesive ideas that fit together to become a song, because some of the jams are 20 minutes on the same lick over and over until you get sick of it. Sure. Uh, but, you know, you just try to to put together, this goes with this, this goes with this. So it's it's an interesting process, but you know what else have we got to do god still has us here we love each other we just keep working on things until he calls us home so how did you pick on the seven songs for uh your new album that uh, you've got out um how did you pick those songs were all of these uh, were the majority of these songs written i know you said you write a lot of them um how are these particular songs written because you've been doing this for a lot of years so i'm sure there's a stockpile of music you've got somewhere in a drawer somewhere well, we wanted to, this CD is a little different. And if you get to Soldiers of the Crown, that was a song we wrote and released on the three CD. Uh, no, let's say it was on uh, Still Standing. It was on Still Standing, which was the second CD. So we wrote that at the turn of the century, which sounds amazing. You say that. Um, so we wrote that a long time ago, but we've updated it uh, like we do with a lot of our older songs for the live show. We updated it and, and I think made it much more dynamic. So that was one we just had to include. There's a song on there called Heaven's Call, which was written for a friend of ours who passed during right at the beginning of the, the pandemic. He was alive and well and a huge supporter of the band on Friday night. and He was dead on Sunday and wow. it just wow. it just knocked, knocked the wind out of us. And I wrote that song, Heaven's Call in the space of 20 minutes. Uh, I've never wow. written a song that fast. I went, I went, I was so devastated. I went upstairs and my wife bought me a, a baby grand piano for a, a landmark birthday of mine. And I just plinked out that song and it was done. The lyrics came a little later and we worked with some good friends of ours, uh, David Winans of the Winans family. I play keyboards for him. And uh, Peggy Turner Carr, who's also a multi award winner here in Detroit for the, the vocalist. We put that together, that had to go on there. The song right after that was written by a very good friend of ours. His name is David Perez. He's also a singer songwriter. And that was Angel My Love. And he released that on a, uh, an album years ago that I played keyboards on it. And we decided to do a rock version just for him because he, he was struggling at the time. And I said, let's do something to lift Davey up. So we put that song together and put it out to give him an inspiration to let him keep going. And then of course, Checkmate just we needed a seventh song and we came across that. Whoa, 
what if we just put this on there? Now, who's, nobody's going to know what it is, but it's a hoot. So it just ended up there. So that's, you know, I don't know if there's rhyme or reason. I'm hoping that the, it's an inspired bunch of songs and the God's going, this is how you want to do it. But I have no idea. I'm just glad that you like it. That's that's praise to me. Yeah. That's all I need. Well, you know, somebody you, likes you it. All the way from the 1960s to up to today, uh, covering yep. so many facets of music, so many different um, aspects of it, uh, I think is absolutely phenomenal. Like I say, guys, this is not going to be an album that is your typical cookie cutter. The musicians are not cookie cutter mm -mm. Uh, as well, which I absolutely love going back into back into all the albums. OK, so now on this album here. Um, now, you, did you just make sure I got understood right? Seventh Heaven song is just now released. No, it was the yeah. the Seventh Heaven was last year's release, and that's why it's up for the 2023 Detroit Music Award. It came out okay. in 2022, so that's when that one, that's when Seventh Heaven came out. We released a few of the songs as singles before it all got compiled that's okay so that's where so that's, that's how that came across messing. okay so i have a question for you when yep. you're at home just hanging out by yourself and you want to listen to some music who do you typically throw on that's a good question who's your boy that is a good question uh, one of my favorite singer songwriter is a, a man by the name of neil morse who does tons of music. He started out with Spock's beard many, many years ago. And now he, he releases an album probably twice a year. And he is a huge inspiration to both my singing and writing style. So if you look up Neil Morris and just see his entire catalog with bands like Transatlantic and uh, I can't even name all the different versions. He's he's a Nashville artist now, but he is just an amazing writer. I listen to a lot of his music. But then again, I listen to a lot of different songs. I have CDs all over this place of local bands. I support a lot of our local musicians here in Detroit yes. because there are yes. a ton of people. And I will always buy a CD because that's the only way they're going to get any bucks out of these things. So right, I have right. so many CDs that, you know, you just play them once in a while, but at least I feel like I've supported them. I do. So I listen to that. I listen to a lot of instrumental music. I'll listen to anybody from Dream Theater just to humble myself yes. and hear how they play, you know, just kind of okay, go, now. listen to these guys. You know? Are these guys I even human? To, yeah, I know. I just, I listen to the keyboard parts and just kind of go, yeah, all right, I get it. <laughs> Walk away. Okay, show <laughs> off. Uh, really, but you know, it, it keeps you humble, but it also keeps you inspired. I just kind of go, these guys are great. Yes. The, the one thing about Dream Theater, though, it's hard to remember a song, you know, until I play it again. Yes. It's not like it's it, it's catchy like some things, but you talked about contemporary praise and worship, and I totally agree. We go, my wife and I visit different churches. You know, we attend a couple regularly, but we like to also go and support other ministries and people that we meet. And I am a little amazed that the same songs are played in so many of the different churches. It's a but yes. it's a comfort factor because at least you know if you're going to sing along, you've heard it before, and you're not going to make a mistake. You know it. But it that was interesting to me to see that even though uh, different denominations, you know, it was still yeah, I have wow, a problem with this song. That. Joe a, wants me to do those typical hymns, and I'm 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 more of a contemporary singer, so I just kind of always do my own thing. In other, in other words, she <laughs> he's doesn't listen to me. No, I don't. He's he's waiting for me to bust out the old hymnals, but I'm not yet ready to do that. <laughs> but you know, it's nice taking take an old hymn and and make it your own. Uh, you know, if I could find a hymn that would work for Sweet Crystal, I would not have a problem with that. You know, as, as long as we presented it in our style. So that's right. intriguing to me. I'll be very curious to see if you had any ideas for hymns that you think would uh, look, look benefit like from being crystallized. Well, Brian crystallized. Brian Duncan really took like took a took a, a a Paul McCartney song and mixed it with an Amazing Grace, and I really I really liked yes, the way he did that. Did that I really like the way he did that. But. So now, when you say uh, crystallize, give give me your definition because you've used that a lot, and I know with being Sweet Crystal from the beginning. Um, when you're saying crystallize, give, give, give me your definition. How, how, what's the direction that you go when you crystallize a song? Well, we, we take the original song and turn it into something that sounds like we would have written it. As a matter of fact, I've got two songs that I'm playing with right now, taking it to the streets, the Doobie Brothers and You're Simply yes. the Best by Tina Turner. And I started mm -hmm. working with those over the last couple of days, turning them into more of a metal song. 
and you know using the guitars as the main focus but so i'll take that idea and say how do we turn this into you listen to their arrangement and you you dismantle it making it, it your own you keep the parts yeah. you keep the parts the chord structure and that and the elements that people realize but then all of a sudden you add this arsenal behind me uh to the background and let let bill do his his chops and all of a sudden you, you go i know this song i know this song until all of a sudden the lyrics come in and all of a sudden you go I know. Oh, I don't know what this song is. So that's what it is. We take it and we make sure that we're comfortable with it, that it feels good to us. The thing about Sweet Crystal is we're, we've been together so long. We know each other pretty much inside and out musically. And even yes. when we make mistakes, we all make it at the same time. So it sounds like it's part of the song. Um, right. <laughs> but it's if, if it if it doesn't amuse us, if it doesn't entertain us, if it doesn't lift us up, then eventually it just kind of gets put off to the side. And we we look for something else because not everything is work. Uh, one of the coolest songs we ever played when we started out was "Court of the Crimson King" by King Crimson, and you got to go way back to even know what that song yes. is. Yes, another we another used, group of phenomenal yeah. musicians. So we used to play that live, and and my wife still asks me to this day, "Is why don't you guys bring that one back up?" And I think about it, but it's such a long song in a thirty-minute set. There's one song where we go, "All right, now we got time for two more. Now what?" So that's the downside for big progressive epics like that. You know, when you're only given so much time, when we're headlining and we have an hour to play, then we can bring out a lot more of our of our catalog, right. which is thrilling to us. I love playing our music, but the 30 minute so sets that we do. Yeah. So um, we got a question for it. We got about three minutes yeah. on this. Don't okay. Oh, we're going to 845. Oh, we're going to I'm not reading them. I know. So, okay, so so we got extended five minutes. Awesome. Nice. Right, go, ahead, go ahead with your question. So my the, question is: at any given night, um, I'm sure it's probably changed over the years, but say within the you know the last few gigs you've done, what is the the song that you most look forward to playing? I would say Warriors, and Warriors is on an earlier the three CD plus the Got Your Six re-release. Warriors is our ode to the men and women of the armed forces and their family members who stay behind while their loved ones go into the gap to stand for the rest of us. You don't have to support any war, but we have to support our warriors. And it was really that song we finished for that first veterans benefit that we played some 12 years ago. It had been sitting on the shelf and we said, you know what, let's finish this song for this event. And we've been playing it ever since. And, and, and Billy plays a, just an amazing solo in it right in the middle. But it just means so much to us. There are veterans in every crowd that we play for. And we always ask yes. for them to be recognized. And we tell them this is for them. So that song will bring a tear to people's eyes. And it'll, as you can tell from my voice, it brings a tear to me. It, that's a song that means the world to us. Thank you for asking. That's awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for doing that. Okay, so I see you've got a, the some uh, keys behind you, and I'm going to assume since we didn't talk about this earlier, but maybe and hopefully you've got uh, something you could play to where the listeners could uh, hear what you got. Uh, no. Had I known no. that, I would have got something. <laughs> no, because I don't say nothing up. So I just I, I see the think, keyboard. And I, I, I don't know if you can hear that. Nope. Well, bummer. So, guys, the only way that you're going to be able to get that, and I'm going to tell you what it's we're going to be well worth the Sorry. trip, is Q, tell <laughs> them where they can get your music and where to find you, where they can like you, and where they can follow you. I appreciate that. Uh, the easiest thing, of course, is sweetcrystal.com. You go there, you can get links to the Facebook. to the. If you do a Google search for the band, Sweet Crystal the Band, you will get six or seven pages of hits on us because we have a history but it's real simple. You go to Sweet Crystal Band on Facebook, but basically go to the main website. Right off the top, you can sign up for the email blast and you will keep you right in the loop of, of who we are and what we're doing. If you want that download code and you can't find it online, just message us. We'll be glad to get it. We're very responsive. But we'll be glad to get you out whatever you need from us. I need a t-shirt. I need a t-shirt. Everybody's with t-shirts. Where and where, they can get you know, like your merch because you've got some cool t-shirts. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. The, the merch is up there on Sweet Crystal. Yeah. You can either go to bandcamp.sweetcrystal.com or the, there's a merch page on sweetcrystal.com. So 
any of those places will take you right to what, what you need to, to how to contact and anything that we might have that you need. All right. So, awesome. so one question I do want to ask, and I, I ask this to a lot of bands, a lot of artists, 2020 come out. And I know it was shut down a lot of music opportunities when the nation shut down. Right? And, but it looks like you guys spent a lot of time in studio. Is, is, is that correct? We did, and we even got to broadcast uh, a couple of live events from right here at Crystal Quarters. Uh, one of the awards we got from the Academia people out in L.A. was for a live performance video. We did an actual 30-minute live show during the pandemic. Uh, and that's when we did record a lot and release the 45s just to keep people aware of us. And once we got okay to get back out, we got back out. One of the things I'm doing now is a lot more solo, but never alone appearances. It's just me, one keyboard, going to a lot of coffee houses and open mics just to keep the music and message of Sweet Crystal going for nights and places that the whole band can't make it to. So that has opened for the last two years, that's opened up a lot of opportunities for me just to get our music out. So it's, it's interesting to be on your own. You don't have anybody else to blame for a mistake. When it's just you and a keyboard, <laughs> just kind of look around going, oh, this didn't work. Uh, it's, it's I had, had one work. of those yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I watched that. I watched that award uh, ceremony on the way to the studio this morning. And um, uh, like you said earlier, there is a huge difference in the dynamics of listening to an album or a recording um, as as opposed to a live show. You guys were rocking oh out. My goodness, yes. Yeah, I really... I really got into the live uh, watching that performance on the way here this morning. That was phenomenal. And she has been banned oh, from you. doing that again because I kept wanting to watch. <laughs> and I was driving. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, I, I was hoping she wasn't driving while doing that. I no, that, that, that wasn't me. Easy. That would ban her. <laughs> I, just, I just kept doing one of these. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. So, so thank you. Thank you. you. That's that. very nice. Thank you for saying that. Thank you. We definitely appreciate your music, I, and I appreciate you coming on to our program. And uh, do you have anything coming up uh, right now that you can find on your website as far as shows coming, that kind of thing? Have you got coming up to you, whether it's a solo or whether it's the whole band? Uh, I've got, yeah, I actually, I, I posted this event today, so I, I got that out of there. Hopefully, people will be able to find this this podcast. Um Wednesday night, I'm doing an open an open mic out in Howell, Michigan. Friday night, I'm doing a Waterford Eagles appearance, and uh, an open mic. I also play with a band called Secondhand Mojo, which is more of a, a classic Midwestern rock band. We've got a couple of headlining events coming up in the next week. I play with David Winans Pie. He's got some events coming up. So really, if you if you get to the Sweet Crystal page and go to the Solo Q page, which is my personal page up there, you can see all the events I'm doing. But basically, go to sweetcrystal.com as new shows come in. It'll be listed right at the top of that first page. Awesome. I love to hear that you, you're you keeping so busy. No, no. Absolutely. Yeah, nothing in the slowing down area coming up for you. I love to hear that. I'm scoring a cartoon. Really? <laughs> I'm scoring a cartoon. I'm waiting for the final file so I can start doing this. And I'm going, what? What am I doing? And so it's that's five minute phenomenal. animation that's a very positive cartoon it's it's a life lesson for kids and they're giving me carte blanche on what kind of music to put into it and i just kind of go nice. wow how interesting so uh, right. yeah I, in my my off hours yes yeah. <laughs> what are those <laughs> okay so so right now we need to find uh we need to get you down here into this area into the brand i love space. that area so anybody out there you got a church you got a venue we need you to contact q go to his website uh sweetcrystal.com and uh let's bring him down here because that way we can have him back in here but actually in studio yes that would be cool that would be cool i would love to right. and i we would love doing that my wife and i can travel pretty much at a moment's notice the rest of the band has to work it out but my brother lives in springfield down there so i would come down just to visit him too well, well bring it on down q what are you waiting for <laughs> brother put him to work put your other brother to work yeah guys, we're gonna get out of here q, thank you all right so god much. bless you god bless you, you. Well. guys don't forget sweetcrystal.com go over there check it out we are out of here be back wednesday morning uh, with a very special program just for you. God bless. Be safe.